Aloha, my name is Sophia, and today in Unit 2, Part 2, we will be discussing ocean impacts. The world's oceans make up 71% of the Earth's surface and greatly influence life as we know it today. Although oceans are the world's largest carbon sink, as they continue to absorb more and more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, they pass a certain threshold and the oceans begin to warm and chemistry changes, impacting marine life. In this first section, we will focus on the impacts of warming sea temperatures on coral reefs and define coral bleaching. Let's start with what is coral? Do you think it's an animal, a plant, or a mineral? At first glance, it resembles a rock, and when first described, scientists classify it as a plant. But it's actually an animal, even though many coral species also have mineral and plant components. Let's take a closer look. Corals are made up of tiny animals called polyps. A coral polyp has a central mouth surrounded by tentacle-like arms. The tentacles are equipped with stinging cells called nematosis that allow them to paralyze and capture their food. We see the same anatomy in corals' close relatives, sea jellies and sea anemones. Coral secretes a hard outer skeleton of limestone or calcium carbonate that attaches either to the rock or the dead skeleton of other polyps. Each individual you see is one coral polyp. One colony is made up of hundreds of thousands of tiny coral polyps and creates the structures we know as coral reefs. You've probably seen coral skeletons on the shoreline. The last component and the likely the most important is the mutualistic relationship corals have with a single-celled algae called zooxanthellae. A mutualistic relationship is where two different organisms benefit from one another. The algae or zooxanthellae produces the majority of food and nutrients the coral needs in order to survive. This is done through the process of photosynthesis, which is why we typically find coral reefs in shallow environments. Although corals can capture their own food with their tentacles, it is not enough to sustain the coral, so it relies on the zooxanthellae. Some species get up to 90% of their food and energy from the zooxanthellae. In return, the algae benefits from a home in the tissue of the coral polyp. The zooxanthellae is also responsible for the coral's color, from shades of brown to orange to blue and pink. Coral reefs are the most diverse ecosystems in the world, and there are many forms of corals with an estimated 2,500 species. When it comes to identifying them, they typically fall into eight different categories. The first is branching corals, with multiple layers or branch-like structures. Folios have broad plate-like flaps. Mushroom corals resemble a cup of a mushroom and are solitary, meaning it's just one coral polyp. Encrusting corals create a thin, colorful surface and are some of the most adaptive corals. Digitate resembles fingers in their form of growth. Massive corals are typically boulder-shaped and vary in size, some reaching the size of a two-story house. Elk horn resembles the branched horns of an elk or deer. And finally, table corals are easily recognizable by the table form horizontal growth. So how are coral reefs important? First, we have biodiversity. We learned that coral reefs are one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world. They are home to a quarter of the world's marine species, yet coral reefs make up less than 1% of the oceans. That's a lot of animals in a small area. As a food source, an estimated 500 million people that live near the coast rely on seafood as their main source of food. Coral reefs are natural marine barriers that protect coastal communities from high impact waves and storms. For many places around the world, including Hawaii, it provides a livelihood for millions of individuals in the tourism industry. And finally, new important medicinal components have been discovered in several marine species that inhibit coral reefs. Coral reefs play an important role in Hawaiian culture. By looking at the kumulipo, we can see how Hawaiians value the relationships between all living things. The kumulipo is a sacred Hawaiian creation chant that explains how life began and traces the genealogy of Hawaiian ali'i, or ruling chiefs. This chant is over 2,000 lines long and has been passed down from generation to generation. The kumulipo is the cultural foundation, connecting kanaka, or the Hawaiian people, to the land, plants, and animals that they come from. It is important to recognize the hierarchy laid out in the kumulipo because humans are seen as a living component of the environment, but not the most important part. Man is the last to be born, 
which means that humans are seen as the younger siblings of the Aina and all living things. In each Va, or era of the Kumulupo, more and more organisms are born. The coral polyp is actually the first organism born because it is the basic building block for life in the sea. Hanao ka ugu koa koa, hanao kana, hanao ka a koa koa, puka. Born was the coral polyp, born was the coral, come forth. The next few lines introduce starfish, sea cucumbers, and sea urchins. The kumulipo contains so much cultural and biological knowledge, and it really embodies the values of malama aina, understanding the importance of caring for the environment and everything in it. Now that we know the biology of coral and biological and cultural significance of the coral, let's look at one of the main threats, coral bleaching. This is a photo of a branching coral. On the left, you see a healthy coral colony, and on the right, the same coral colony is completely white or bleached. This is the calcium carbonate skeleton being exposed. But why exactly is this happening? If you remember that single-celled algae, cells and theli, not only provides the coral with the nutrients it needs in order to survive, but is also responsible for the color of the coral. A healthy coral colony will display vibrant colors. But when conditions change, the coral becomes stressed and the relationship between the coral and algae stops functioning. In this state, the coral is stressed. The zooxanthellae is expelled and the coral loses its color, exposing its white calcium carbonate skeleton. Although it may seem like the coral is dead, it is still alive, but it is now fully relying on capturing plankton with its tentacles. It unfortunately cannot sustain itself for a long time in this state, so unless conditions improve and the algae returns, the coral will die. What causes coral bleaching? The main cause is increased ocean temperatures. Corals are very sensitive animals and a small change in temperature can cause the animal to stress. In 2015, we experienced record-breaking record -breaking temperatures impacting reefs globally. This map illustrates the stress levels of reefs around the world, where the red colors indicate high level of stress due to warmer water temperatures. Another source of stress causing coral bleaching is runoff from land as sediment and dirt and enter coastal areas and smother or suffocate reefs, and pollution either intentionally or accidentally entering the ocean changes the chemistry of the water and causes bleaching. Unfortunately, global bleaching events are becoming more common and reefs can adapt as quickly to warming oceans. A bleached coral colony has the ability to recover if these stressors are reduced or last a short period of time. The longer these conditions remain, the higher the mortality or death rate of coral reefs. In Unit 3, we'll explore solutions to these issues. In this part, you will complete three activities exploring coral bleaching. In the first activity, Biology and Ideal Environment for Corals, you'll learn more about the anatomy of coral and the ideal environments coral reefs thrive in. In 2015, Hawaii experienced a coral bleaching event. In this activity, you'll analyze data from this event and learn how severe this bleaching was for coral reefs in Hawaii. In the last activity, you'll analyze a coral transect. This method of photographing quadrants of reefs is used to analyze the health, abundance, and diversity of different coral reefs. You'll end this part by completing the quiz. Check out the additional video resource folder in the Google Classroom for additional information on coral reefs. Mahalo for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.